Hello everybody, my name is Gopika and I am a student of IM Trichy. Today I am going to talk about the intricate evolution of cesis in India. India's special economic zones boast a rich history constantly adapting to meet the nation's economic aspirations. The story begins in 1965 with Asia's first expo export processing zone, EPZ, established in Kanla, Gujarat. These early zones aim to stimulate exports, especially in labor-intensive industries like uh, textiles and garments. They offered a haven with lax regulations and duty-free imports, attracting foreign investment. However, their success was limited by over-dependence on incentives coupled with inadequate infrastructure and red tape hindering long-term growth. Recognizing the limitations of EPZs, the Indian government embarked on a significant policy shift in the year 2000. The introduction of CESIS aimed to create a more holistic and business-friendly environment. CESIS diversified beyond just manufacturing, encompassing service sectors like IT and financial services. This broadened their appeal and, uh, appeal and catered to the evolving global economy. Emphasis was placed on developing world-class infrastructure with CESIS, including efficient transportation networks, reliable power supply, and advanced communication technologies. CESIS offered a range of tax benefits, including income tax uh, exemptions, duty-free imports of capital goods, and streamlined custom, customs procedures. A simplified approval process was implemented with a single authority handling, handling all necessary permits and clearances. The streamlined approach saved investors much time and effort. The CES Act of 2005 served as a critical milestone providing a robust legal framework of CESIS. It established the Board of Approval as the central decision-making body and clearly defined the various types of CES, including free trade zones, which focused on attracting international trade and logistic companies, special economic and technological parks, which geared towards promo uh, promoting R&D and knowledge-based industries, biotechnology parks, which catered to the growth of biosciences sector, and multi-product CESIS, which offered a mix of manufacturing and service activities within a single zone. The Indian CES story doesn't end there. The contribution of service sectors like IT, finance and logistics in CESIS is growing rapidly, reflecting India's evolving economic landscape. CESIS are increasingly leveraging cutting-edge technologies like automation, AI and blockchain to enhance operational efficiency and reduce costs. Modern CESIS are adopting cleaner production technologies, utilizing renewable energy sources and focusing on waste management policies. Talking about the impact of CESIS, while Indian CESIS have undoubtedly contributed to economic growth, foreign investment and job creation, there are ongoing debates about their effectiveness. The environmental impact of some CESIS remain a concern. Balancing growth with environmental responsibilities is crucial. Not all regions have benefited equally from CESIS. Effects, uh, efforts are underway to ensure broader regional development and avoid creating isolated pockets of prosperity. The future of Indian CESIS seem bright. With the continued focus on innovation, sustainability and inclusive development, they can become even more effective engines of economic growth. Additionally, the government's push for plug-and-play facilities and streamlined procedures will further enhance their attractiveness. As India continues to integrate with global economy, services are likely to play a central role in, operate, in propelling the nation towards a prosperous and sustainable future. That's it from my side. I hope you find this video interesting and informative. Thank you.